On tonight's show, we're talking the NFL season starts and how Ray McDonald might be the first person charged with domestic abuse and then face those new NFL penalties. We're also talking a lot of other things, but along with that, we're talking MLB, how the Royals are surging and how other people are not. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> and if you notice, we had a very new announcer. Um, we might bring him back every now and then. He's got the deepest voice for any baby you've ever met. Any. Any baby that can't talk yet. Ever. I mean, the real accomplishment is doing this without being able to talk. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and tonight's Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winner is Baby. Baby. <laughs> I actually have one, but yeah. So, so welcome to our Thursday show. Uh, it is a great evening. NFL this season is kicking off right now. We're going into halftime with the Seattle and Green Bay game. So. I hope you don't mind giving us a little bit of your time, prying yourself away from that game. But yeah, so tonight's our sports night. Welcome in. Talking about a bunch of stuff, mostly NFL and MLB, but a little bit of college football mixed in there. But let's start it out this week the same way we started off every week, and that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. <laughs> and this week's award goes to me. Yeah, because I'm the best fantasy football drafter ever. Come on. Give me my award. Uh, okay, so it doesn't really go to me. But it does go to somebody. And this week, it goes to Adam LaRoche. And that is because yesterday, Adam LaRoche comes into uh, the Dodgers against the Nationals game in the ninth inning as a pinch hitter. He had been feeling a little banged up recently, so they were giving him the day off, or at least so he thought. But they needed a pinch hitter. They bring him in. The score is tied 3-3. He goes and hits, I believe it's a two-run home run, to put him up 5-3. Well, the Dodgers came back at the other half of that in the ninth inning and tied it up. Game goes to, I believe, 14 innings where Adam LaRoche hits a single to drive in another, or he drove in another run somewhere in there, and then drove in the winning two runs later on because, of course, they matched it. So the Nationals won 8-5 in 14, and that's because Adam LaRoche had five RBIs past the ninth inning, which is amazing. So you get our Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award. Yeah, and the Nationals are actually doing pretty well there. They're actually really far ahead, it looks like. I think their magic number is down to 18 or 17, and if you don't know what magic numbers are, that is the number of wins and or losses for the person right under you for you to clinch a playoff spot. So if they win a combination of, let's say they win 10 games over the rest of the season, and Atlanta loses 8 games at some point over the rest of the season, they're in the playoffs. So Yeah, they had a bad weekend though, didn't they? Like, I think last yeah. weekend they uh, they lost like all four. And they like kind that, of they got swept three? by the Phillies. It was a three-game losing streak. So yeah, it wasn't pretty, but eh, you know, they did alright. But, but they were ahead enough that they were still... You know, yeah, the they were they were up by like ten games or something, and now they're up by seven. So oh. <laughs> they're they're still doing pretty well. I believe the the team with the biggest lead is the Baltimore Orioles. They have a nine and a half game lead right now. So otherwise, every other race is pretty tight. But let's let's stick around some MLB and uh, let's go around the diamond real quick. Um, first story I want to talk about is the Brewers. 
Uh, we talked about them earlier this year, how they've been having this up and down season where they'll have like the most amazing month one month, and then the, like the worst month in all time the next month. So yeah, they have fallen to three games behind St. Louis. Now St. Louis is a good team. They do have the the veterans. They know how to get it done towards the end of the year. But I believe they were up by like something like five games, and now they're down by three. So after a one and eight stretch, yeah, it's kind of rough. not insurmountable though. Not Down insurmountable, no. But but if they had a bad either. is that was that a bad month in August? And so they should have a good month in September, or was that a good month in August and now they're in their bad month? Well, it was bad month in August, I guess. So uh, yeah, I guess this <laughs> means they're supposed to have a good month in September. Yeah, as long as they finish it out on the good month, they'll they'll pull ahead, right? Sucks that October is when all the playoffs happen, so that's going to be a bad. Well, but, but they'll at least make the playoffs. Well, eh, maybe. If, if their trend keeps going, they're definitely in. But, uh, yeah, who wants to have a trend of up and down, up and down, up and down? Not, not so much fun. I, so, I'd rather have that than just down. Well, nah, 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 true, true, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got, I'm with you on that one. So, yeah, but that's the Brewers. Um, now let's move on to the Royals. Those guys are still looking awesome. They're, they're just chugging along. They have extended their lead against the Detroit Tigers, who... Everybody loved those guys. Well, especially when they got the last three AL Cy Young winners on their roster, which is just absurd. But they're not doing well. David Price has been getting killed. I believe at one point he gave up nine straight hits in a row. That means the entire team batted in one inning. So, uh, not good for you. I guess I would be, because if he gave up nine, nine, then the other guys would have gone in too. I was going to say, like, there's more than nine people usually in the rotation. There's usually... Because you have your yeah, designated hitters. hitters. Yeah, well, yeah, but you only have nine. Well, yeah, it was all, the only people that were on there. But the designated hitter takes the place of the pitcher, so you only have nine hitters on a what? thing. And That's the most ridiculous rule in baseball. Why is that rule? Maybe we some need to people, do a segment on that. <laughs> there are some people out there who do hate, I mean hate, the designated hitter. I've heard lots of people throw around, it ruined baseball. But no, I like it. I, I, I think, it. yeah, your, your pitching goes down, but uh, you get more offensive explosion. So it's a good time. Uh, and so they're doing well. I, again, I don't know what's happening to David Price. Uh, this guy's a beast. He, I guess he doesn't like the cold weather because he went from nice and sunny Tampa, Florida to Detroit. So, I mean, it's not cold. It's still summer, actually. What am I talking about? Cold weather. <laughs> There's no cold weather yet. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on with them. And then and then the other part of the Royals is uh, they had a player, Yost, uh, come out and he was really urging fans to show up because their average attendance is the lowest in the MLB right now, and they're actually doing well. And he was like, "Come on, guys, we're actually finally putting on a winning baseball team for you." And yeah, yeah, fans should show up. But I gotta say this: you've been horrible since 1985. Can't blame the fans for not really paying too much attention to you. I, I wouldn't be surprised to have the people in Kansas City were like, "Oh, the Royals—they're still a team." I mean, I haven't heard anything about them for. I don't know, since 1985. Or more likely, too, for a lot of the fans. Like, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, Royals? Who the hell are they? Yeah, we're, getting, we're almost at 30 years since that, so... Yeah, so that was oh. uh, that's kind of interesting. But yeah, so yeah. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with them. Again, I'm rooting for them. They haven't been to the playoffs since 1985, so yeah, I think their drought's about ready to be up. They, their drought can rent they're a car. Hoping, they're hoping that the drought's up. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it would have been well, better. Well, unless if the something really crazy earlier. happens. Well, unless something really crazy happens. I mean, crazy. They're at least going to make a wild card spot, so they'll be in the playoffs. I don't you see know, anything honestly, that crazy happening. Honestly, though, like we talked about, they're they're getting low. They have the lowest attendance, which is pretty bad. Because I look around at even some of the the winning teams that have been winning for the last several years. And you don't see full stadiums almost ever in baseball anymore. Well, when you go to, like, Yankees or the Red Sox, you do, and and the Dodgers not now, game, not all the time. Not every game. But it's just because there's 81 home games. I mean, I there's so many games. So many games. You're never going to you, – you're not uh, – and, and a lot of them are during the week uh, while people are at work. And, all and some stuff. of them are in the middle of the day even. I mean, so yeah. – it's hard to sell out a consistently sell out a baseball stadium. As long as you average probably about seventy five percent capacity, I'd say you're doing pretty darn well. Uh, the owners are making a good amount of money off of that too. So, 
I, I don't know what's going on with them. I, I mean, the Royals fans, if they make it into the playoffs, I guarantee you they'll sell out that stadium. So don't 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 panic, Yost. Give your fans a little bit of time to figure out what's going on, and they will come. Trust me, they will come. The Baltimore if Orioles again. That's the wins. team I'm a I'm a fan of. If you win it, they will come. If you win, they will come. See, there you go. Field of Dreams. Don't don't sue us for copyright. Can they do that? Can they sue us for that? Or we allowed to use movie time. We said something different. You're right. If you win, they will come. That's right. Yeah, we changed it just a little bit. Not from Field of Dreams. Take take. Forget about Field of Dreams. To this situation. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So I I, see, I think that's fair use right there. I'm gonna go for it. Fair use. But yeah, so <laughs> let's move it on and uh, talk about Clayton Kershaw. Now, this guy has been stellar all year long. He's on pace to be only the fourth pitcher to have back-to-back seasons of a minus, uh, of a less than two ERA. I believe he's at 190 right now, so he's doing amazing. This guy's doing everything he's asked. He's pitching seven, eight innings each outing he's out there. And I bring this up not because he's going to win the NL Cy Young, because he will. But this guy is in line to become one of the first pitchers to ever win the MVP award. Now, this is an award, most valuable player. Yeah, it's normally given to position players. And that's that's because for good reason. Position players are out on the field for 150 of 162 games usually. Whereas a pitcher would pitch maybe 20, 30 if he's a starting pitcher. Maybe 70 if he's a reliever. So... He's, yeah, but you always think about the pitchers as like mm-hmm. the real stars of the of the field, so it's just yeah, surprising yeah. that none of them get MB, none of them got MVPs before. Well, that's why they kind of came up with the Cy Young Award to kind of separate it out, so that you know the pitchers would get their own award and then the other players could. But they're eligible for you know the MVP award, and my vote is for him. I mean, if you look at it, when you look at most valuable player, there's nobody in the MLB who has as much of an impact on his team as uh, Clayton Kershaw does. I believe he's pitched 24 starts right now. They've won, uh, I think it's 20 out of 24 starts he's been in there. And when uh, he's got a 17-3 and three record, he just he's the catalyst for a lot of their, their stuff. You know, if they're ever in a losing, you know, they've lost a couple games in a row, they need somebody to stop the bleeding, Clayton Kershaw does it. Not only does he stop it, but he sparks them to spin it around. So I, I think he deserves the MVP here. I'm trying to think of the NL. Nobody else really comes to mind that would beat out Clayton Kershaw for the MVP. So, hey, maybe maybe we'll get a pitcher MVP. Maybe. If you think someone else should get the MVP, comment down below. Yeah, so... Or if yeah. you have a reason why he shouldn't. Yeah, well, say, hit us up, let us know. I mean, really, any of our baseball stories that we were talking about, tell us why I was right or why I was wrong. I mean, I don't know how you could say I was wrong. <laughs> I'm just always right. I mean, come on. <laughs> Silly listeners. Thinking I'm wrong. Make fun of Brian in the comments. I'll give you a thumbs up. Uh, He is the one who replies to most of the posts, so damn it. (laughs) He will agree with you. (laughs) Not if I see it first. I'm going to be looking, looking hard. So, yeah, that's our MLB. So hit us up. Let us know what you think. At Words My Face on Twitter. Of course, Google+, Facebook, Words My Face at gmail.com. Comments down below are always nice. Um, And, you know, let us know what you think about some of those baseball stories. But let's move it on. And I only got one story for this subject, and that is let's take talk a little bit about NCAA football. And that is because I want to talk about Texas A&M, actually. Because you hear on the show, if you've listened to a couple episodes, you realize that I'm not Johnny Manziel's biggest fan. Just, I don't like the guy's attitude. I think he's a little too cocky. Now, he is a great player, especially in college he was a great player. But, you know, I'm a lot about how you bring present yourself yeah, to, things, yes. to the world. I mean, anybody who walks out there and does this when he gets drafted is a cheesy bum. I mean, come on. Seriously? Well, or Seriously? And this guy, kid, comes from, like... Because he's doing poorly. Oh, yeah, he, he did that to the Redskins. In the and they loved it, too. Like, they wanted him to dude, flip him up. it's a preseason. In the preseason, get over. yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Come on. You want to be the... I mean, yeah, the they were doing some Arakpo after... After after Ryan Kerrigan sacked Johnny Manziel, Arakpo had been talking with Kerrigan about doing the little money sign over him, and Kerrigan, eh, he's a little more shy than that, so Arakpo stood up and did it anyway, and I believe that is why the finger was levied at the bench, but <laughs> eh, 
you got to be more professional than that. These guys will do everything to get inside your head. So that's that. But that's that's we kind of ranted a little bit there. But I'm talking about Texas A&M right now because they just jumped from number uh, what, what was it number 21 to number nine, 12 spots in one game where very few of the top 25 teams lost. So that's really surprising. And they did it because Johnny, uh, not Johnny Trill, Kenny Trill, that's his nickname. His real name is Kenny Hill, but he likes to be called Kenny Trill. So this guy comes, Trill, like thrilling, that's like, it's Trill, man. It's kind of a, it's it's slang. Man, you need to keep up with them young kids in the way they be talking nowadays. What? What? Yeah. Yeah, they say Trill. Be like, that's Trill, man. Yo, it's true. All right, they I don't say know. it exactly like you? No, they probably say it a lot cooler than I say it, to be honest with you. Oh, Joe, whippersnappers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you youngers, you young whippersnapper. Yeah, damn it, I should have come up with a different one. You already stole whippersnappers. Nah, I, all right. If you know another way to call young kids young, like an old person would say, hit me up in comments down below. Whippersnappers, what's another one? Rapscallions. <laughs> said Rapscallions. That's a good one. Hit me up with more. I want to hear more. Um, but yeah, so Kenny Trill, he led, the, I believe he passed for over 400 yards, something like four touchdowns in their win this last week. And so it's kind of looking like uh, Manziel, maybe you were good in college. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to take anything away from you. But you're probably not as good as everybody thought that you were. It, it looks like it's more of a system. They had the system in place and it's plug and play. Not saying that Kenny Trill isn't a good quarterback, because he's already done better than Manziel in his first game. Well, not better, so I, I should... That or the system just attracts good players. Yeah, well, that too. But they lost a ton of players last year, and part of it was Texas A&M recently moved over to the SEC, which will attract more players, because everybody knows you play in the SEC, you're playing in the best conference in college football, and you are going to attract more attention. Uh, you look at the first round of most drafts for the NFL, and about 15 of the 32 players are usually SEC products. Not always. But it's, it's a good ratio of SEC products. So Kenny Trill has come out, and he really impressed, especially a 12-spot jump in the standings from 21 to number 9. I mean, that's in, absurd. I can't remember any time I've seen a team jump that far ahead. Now, they did play a really good team in South Carolina, so that's part of it. South Carolina led by Steve Spurrier. Not, we're not really a fan of Steve Spurrier here on the show, though. Why are we a fan of Steve Spurrier? Because he He's quits. So bitter? What, I'm not bitter. I just, you know, I mean, he's a quitter. He was like, ah, let's go throw the ball. Let's play a little bit, a bit, a bit, a, 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 a pitch and catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it didn't work. All right, all right. You know, you know, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I gotta get out of here. I, I can't deal. I can't deal. Yes, I yeah. doubt that it was really a matter of him getting out. It, we're talking about a coach under Snyder. If you're not in the playoffs, you're yeah, but Snyder heads on the top this guy. Snyder like idolizes this guy. When Snyder first took over as owner, he tried to recruit. Steve Spurrier. He would have given him three seasons. He could have had three seasons. But nope, nope, nope. We're talking about Snyder here. Spurrier quit. The only All right. person that's gotten three seasons that didn't... No, the only person... You only get three seasons if you get to the playoffs. Yeah, Even yeah. Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs only got three seasons. He got four and seasons. he made it to the playoffs. And he, he was got, Joe Gibbs. He got four seasons, and Joe Gibbs left. He didn't have to leave. He won. Yeah, I know, but that's just because he's Joe Gibbs. Like, okay... Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. You look at the first two years, Norv Turner, he got he made it to the playoffs the first year, got fired in the middle of the next. Um, <laughs> so that's not good. Yeah, so, so we had Marty Schott for Then we have Steve Spurrier for two. I think Joe Gibbs was after Steve Spurrier, so it wasn't too bad. And then we had uh, Jim Zorn. Yeah. Go ahead and womp Dan Snyder. This is a womp for you, Dan Snyder, for Jim Zorn. <laughs> Zorn no, even do, though, to be fair, Zorn nice didn't do too bad for going to a head coach position that quickly. From a quarterback's coach to head coach, yeah, that was a pretty, pretty fast ascent. But yeah, and, and Zorn is a good guy. I'm not trying to hate on the guy. You would expect under those circumstances yeah, for a first Jim year. Zorn was a very nice guy. So all hating aside, I'm sorry, Jim Zorn, that I had to speak bad about you, but because he was just in general a good guy. But if you know, he had been the friends? offensive coordinator like he interviewed for, it probably would have done a lot better. But how did we go from talking about Johnny Manziel to and Texas A&M to talking? Oh, because oh, South Carolina. Spurrier. 
Because yeah, because they played South Carolina. Okay, yeah. So all right, yeah, that was. I was like, where did we just come from with this one? <laughs> but uh, yeah. So so Texas A&M having that huge jump. I mean, I want to say they lost two thirds of their off. I mean, not two thirds. They lost three fifths of their offensive line. Uh, they lost a really good wide receiver. They lost, of course, Johnny Manziel. They lost a good good couple people off of defense. And they're still doing it. So it looks like Texas A&M is a program on the rise. So we'll have to keep an eye on them, see if they can keep it up throughout the rest of the season. If Kenny Trill didn't just have an amazing game, and then he's going to go downhill. Because Johnny Menzel did have two full seasons of amazing games. So, yeah. Again, I'm not I'm hating on them, but I'm trying not to hate too much. Because you know what they say. Haters going to hate? You only know haters come out. So I don't want, I, I don't want, I don't want Menzel to think he's arrived because I'm hating even though that's kind of what it means. So in a way, I'm helping him. You are welcome, Manziel. If you'd like to come on the show, I would welcome you on. He's arrived. That doesn't mean he's not going to leave soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true, too. Just because you got here doesn't mean you stay in. But yeah, so that's that's the NCAA story. And let's take that, and let's roll it over into the NFL. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. I know I, was, I didn't. I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know everybody's excited as I am uh, to see the NFL come back because, oh, man, it just, it's the longest offseason of all of them. And, yeah, I like hearing about football talk. The draft is nice. It gets a big, a big event. It, it seems like we had football all year round this year, but I, I want to see the, them play the games. That's really what I watch the sport for is see them play the games. All the talk is great, but you and never know what's going to happen and, until they and hit. That's America's real sport now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's America's new pastime. It's our future time, too. To the rest of the Past world, time and it future has time. America in the name. It does. It, that's true. American <laughs> football. Because they want to call football something that you you know that you kick that round ball around at a net with people. You, you know, that, whatever that game is called. The, the most popular game in the world. I don't know what that game's called. It's called soccer. Not football. Okay, it's called football. Except here. I don't know. Except here. <laughs> We're in America. <laughs> We'll call it soccer. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah. So let's let's run down some of the things going on now. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot of stories that I've heard of people getting arrested and suspended. So I'm gonna try to keep those down. But that's like all the stories. So I'm not gonna. Eh, I'm gonna have to talk about them. All. Let's start with Wes Welker. Already though, like right before the season starts. Unfortunately, they they announced a bunch of them right before it started. So we're gonna start with Wes Welker. The talented Denver Broncos wide receiver. He's been suspended for, for the first four games of the year due to using amphetamines. Now, that's bad. That means like meth or something like that. I mean, there are other types of amphetamines, I'm sure, but that's what I think of when I hear amphetamines. So that's not good. And it was it was kind of interesting because they were talking about it, and he was drug tested randomly right after the Kentucky Derby. And now the NFL doesn't always drug test people. If you're a per player that usually they don't see any weirdness with you, you've passed your initial couple drug tests when you first got in the league, and they usually leave you alone. I, I, I thought Wes Welker would be one of those people that they would leave alone. But he was at the Kentucky Derby this year, and apparently he was acting kind of strange. Uh, now, he won a good amount of money. He did bet uh, on one of the horses, won something like $50,000 on one of his bets. And there's a lot of photos of him walking around talking to fans and just handing out money. It's just, here you go, here's some money, here's some money. Uh, make it rain, make it rain. And, They're suspicious. Uh, Anyone who gives out money must be on drugs. Well, then they drug tested him. And they're saying that this was like the day or two after the Kentucky Derby. And what happened? He tested positive. Now, his story is he never intentionally ingested amphetamines. So, I kind of believe, to be honest with you. I mean, this guy's been in the league for over 10 years. We've never had this problem with him. I can't imagine it would just pop up out of nowhere, unless, like, Colorado has, like, the worst amphetamine problem ever. So, when he moved from New England to Colorado, like, it was everywhere and he couldn't stay away from it. But his real defense here is that he must have had something slipped into his drink, which is interesting, because he's saying to the world, I got roofied at the Kentucky Derby. I guess it's not roofied. Mollied would be the right word. Because mollies are more amphetamines, right? I don't know. What are these drugs? Well, mollies. Brian, why don't you educate us all on the various way, the various terms for, you know, drugging other people without their knowledge? Well, 
It seems like you have an obsessive knowledge. I know Rufy and I know Molly. I know Rufy and Molly. All right, that's all I know. There, there might be other ones, but I don't know. But he, so he, he thinks somebody slipped him a Molly while he was there, and that might explain some of the erratic behavior. Now, I don't think it's erratic him giving away money. He's like, oh, I'm a millionaire anyway. Let me make somebody else's day a little better. I don't, I don't fault him yeah. at all for doing that. I actually praise him. Owners don't like that precedent. Like what? <laughs> giving away money? Being generous? No. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you be that generous to drugs? <laughs> <laughs> to drug test him now. Do it now. So yeah. So, but apparently that's what happens in the NFL. Is uh, yeah, they drug test you right after. So, yeah. So that's weird. I'm hoping we won't hear any type of issue from Wes Welker again like this. He will have to serve his four game suspension. There's really nothing you can do. Sorry, buddy. You are stuck with that that tag that you got suspended for amphetamines. But I'll tell you how to make up for it. Those 12 games that you are allowed to play this year, just be spectacular. Show everybody that, hey, I'm not doing drugs. I'm a finely tuned physical athlete, and nobody will remember this by next year. So, yeah. So let's move it on to yeah. the next person. Other than, hold on. There are people oh, okay. that might remember next year. The people that picked him for their draft. Oh, yeah. If you picked him for your fantasy draft, you are screwed. That's right. Because and that's we, why like, you don't pick so early. Yeah. Well, that's you why we did our fantasy you know. draft last night for the show. We did our fantasy draft last night. We will talk about that a little later. But that's one of the reasons is because you don't want to draft somebody who gets hurt or gets suspended for a couple games. You know, you want to make sure all that stuff is done with before you start your draft. And I'm Just sure a lot of people picture. picked him up, too. I'm Everybody sure a lot picked of people. Him up. So. He is owned in 100% of the leagues, guaranteed. There's nobody who didn't pick him up. I mean, it would be foolish not to pick him up as at least, like, a flex player. I mean, yeah. he's, a, he's a solid wide receiver, so, yeah. Well, let's roll that over to the... picked him up, like, first, first round, second round, so... Oh, well, then you're really screwed. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so let's roll this over to the next person who got suspended. Or, he didn't get suspended yet, but it's looking like he will. Ray McDonald... He is going to be notorious now for maybe being the first person to be penalized under the new NFL domestic violence rules. Now, after the Ray Rice fiasco that happened and the suspension of only two games and all the public criticism that came down on Roger Goodell, who even himself came out and said, hey, look, I made a mistake. I was judging him on the previous standards, and I probably shouldn't have done that. Now, Ray Rice is a good, upstanding character. He did have make a mistake. I hope it was only a mistake. I'm going to be nice to him now. We were pretty mean to him earlier, so if you want to see me be mean to him, go to our other Ray Rice video. Uh, yeah, and we'll be mean to him there, but uh, I don't feel like being mean to him right now. But Roger Goodell did come out and say, look, it, you know, it was a mistake. I should have suspended him for more games, which he should have. I mean, if you're getting suspended for four games for substance abuse, you should be getting suspended more, at least four games, if not more, for hitting a woman. So they Before changed the rule. knocking out a woman. Well, Not knocking out a woman and then dragging her out of the elevator. Okay, we're going to be a little mean. It, it was crazy what he did. So, uh, But uh, they recently changed the rules to be your first offense for domestic violence will automatically trigger a six-game suspension, so a really good long suspension. Your second offense will then uh, trigger a lifetime ban from the NFL. So I think they finally got a good policy in place, and they're putting it there. Now, unfortunately, Ray McDonald, a believe player for, of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, he was arrested over the weekend or a couple days ago for an alleged... Now, I say alleged because it, it, this is a process. Sometimes the cops go out there and they say, oh, there was an argument and, you know, let's let the courts sol solve this. But an alleged domestic incident. Now, they didn't say abuse. They didn't say assault. They didn't say... They said incident. So I don't know quite how that relates to what he did. But if it does turn out that he did abuse a woman in the domestic setting, he's going to get a minimum of six-game suspension. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Not that I'm oh, saying honestly, I did want to see it. Yeah. it's Honestly, it's good that the that the league is, kind of, is going down on this. I mean, you would expect someone might not be able to uh, to be in the it for six games anyway because of the legal consequences, but we know oh, that no, how that usually play. turns out. These guys will play all the way through this until the suspensions get handed down. I mean, they will go for it. Like, the two dumb Steelers running backs we were talking about, they're not suspended yet. They're still going to go, so... Yeah, no, but I'm saying, too, like, because of the legal consequences, you'd think, you know, domestic violence doesn't usually 
well, one would hope doesn't carry light, uh, yeah, criminal penalties, but I don't know. Maybe you never know. Maybe they do. Yeah. Maybe it's lighter than yeah, what we. Yeah, you would think that would be the like the thing. Don't travel out of state type stuff. <laughs> and yeah. in the NFL, all they do is travel out of state. So I mean, granted, you got good lawyers, but yeah. I don't know. Well, again, I'm hoping that they it turns out to be a misunderstanding for Ray McDonald's, um, you know, sake. Nobody likes to hear about any type of domestic violence. Uh, so I'm hoping it's a misunderstanding, but you never know. It could not be. And then hopefully the hammer will come down on them if it's not. So wait for more details to come out. I don't really want to comment on that too much before the details come out. I just wanted to kind of give it a footnote there. In the and, show. Honestly, and so... Do we have another criminal case coming up? Yeah, we, yeah, we do. How many do we have? All of the NFL. All of the NFL. <laughs> the whole team. A class action lawsuit against the entire NFL. <laughs> They took our jibs. I don't know. Everybody in the NFL has been suspended or arrested. It's all of them. They took our jibs. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the next one is Jakar Hamilton of the Dallas Cowboys is getting a four-game suspension for violating the substance abuse policy. Now, this is the second member of the already beleaguered secondary of the Dallas Cowboys to get suspended. Um... Uh, you might remember Orlando Scandrick got suspended for four games um, for a very similar offense, except for his was PED. So, yeah, it, it's not only that the Cowboys got rid of their best defensive players and Jason Hatcher and DeMarcus Ware, but now they're, like, intentionally forcing themselves out. So this is what's going to happen. If you're a fantasy owner of Tony Romo, you're probably liking this because it's going to mean that the Cowboys are going to be playing from behind every game, so all that's going to happen is Tony Roman's going to throw for 500 yards and four touchdowns, and they're still going to lose every game. So. And that's the best situation if you're like me and have Tony Romo and don't want him to win, but want him to win for you. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. There, there's your win-win situation right there. He doesn't win, but he wins for you, so yeah. Uh, gosh, and I wish I didn't have to say this, but let's talk about another suspended player. And it's going to be Josh Gordon this time. And not because Josh Gordon just recently got suspended. We talked about this last week, how he did have his one-year suspension upheld for violating the substance abuse program. I believe it's the third time or second time. I can't remember which one. But too many times. Um, and that is because we talked about him last week. or I, I, Sorry, we didn't talk about this last week. But he wanted to join the CFL. He wanted to, you know, do something physical, something in the, the vein of football while he was suspended from, from American football. So he contacted a Canadian team and was like, hey, can I come over and play for you guys? I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> so they were like, huh, let's think about it. But under CFL rules, they are not allowed to offer any suspended player from another league a contract. So And the Browns had a clause in there that if he was suspended, he wasn't allowed to play for anybody else pretty interesting that you would have that clause in your contract. Maybe that's a standard thing. That's, that I'm... Honestly, that's probably standard. That doesn't sound too odd to me because you want to lock in your players and you don't want... You also want to drive home the impact of a suspension. You don't want it yeah. to be like, oh, well, I can just go play for someone else. And you also don't want to help out uh, essentially competitors, even if they're in another yeah. league and they're essentially a competitor. So. But so what has happened is... Oh, man, I shouldn't have checked my fantasy football score. But what has happened is since he's no longer in the NFL, he's not allowed to play um, in the CFL, guess what he's doing? I'll give you three guesses. Guess. He's starting his own league. No. Uh, he's trying to play in the arena football? No. Okay, he's, you're not going to guess. He's starting his own <laughs> I'll put you on the spot there. Starting a drug cartel. Yes, that is what he's doing. He moved to Mexico and started a drug cartel. No, he's not starting a drug cartel. <laughs> he's actually going to be selling cars in the Cleveland area now. So um, he yeah, has been good. promoted to like head of head of uh, like promotions or something like that in, in Cleveland uh, somewhere. So yeah, that's that takes your career from an illustrious, the best wide receiver in football last year, to a car salesman. Now, nothing against car salesmen. I am a salesman myself. Not hating on them at all. But if you go from playing in the NFL 
to selling cars, there's something there's something a little no, wrong. I and bet a lot of players have that situation. They just probably don't do it in the middle of their career. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. John Elway did go ahead and buy a bunch of car dealerships after he was done playing. That is true. But yeah, you're right. He didn't do that in the beginning of his career. So, so. yeah. Yeah, so Josh Gordon, what did you do, buddy? What did you do? Come on, man. We need you back in the NFL. You're a great receiver. Stop smoking the pot and get on. I mean, I have nothing against doing that. Just wait until after you're off of out of your career. I mean, come on, buddy. You can move to a place like Colorado or Washington and be just as happy. Make your millions of dollars first. And entertain me, really, is what I'm trying to say. Entertain me. Don't let the team down, man. Even if it is... Don't let me down. <laughs> yeah, even if it is Cleveland. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's the NFL. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our fantasy draft last night. So, right now, there's not really much scoring going on. I am up 3-2 to because I have Eddie Lacy. The person I'm playing has Aaron Rodgers, and that's it. Uh, let's, let's check Brendan out. And Brendan, uh, I believe he was the, the leader so far of the week. Yes, and he still is. Nope, nope, another team has 18 points. But Brendan is winning his game 14 to nothing. Yeah, Brendan, you're up by two touchdowns. And that is cause, because he was smart, and he didn't draft Arian Foster first, and he drafted Marshawn Lynch, who right now has 87 yards and a touchdown. So, yeah, it's We're looking good for you. Let's do it. And, and you know what? I'm going to contribute all his success to the seven rules of fantasy football. I mean, you, you have nothing to say about that. Lot, really, it's because I'm awesome. <laughs> All right, it's just because he's awesome. It's just because he's awesome. But, yeah, so we will keep you up with more updates, more than that. Uh, it's just because there's only, like, half of a football game done. And, uh, yeah, we'll yes. give you more league updates as the season goes on. Speaking of which, surprise topic. NFL season. Se- yeah. NFL season starting on a Thursday? I pose this to one it's... of the Google Plus communities, too. Um, what do you think about that? I personally... Uh, I'm not a big fan. I think that we should have a a weekend kickoff for the whole season. Like I you do should... like the whole Sunday start off thing, but they've been doing the Thursday thing for about ten years, so I don't I mean, like I kinda got used to it. Yeah, I, I don't like it that much either. I think I think you're right. Having the season start off with everybody playing on Sunday and of course your Monday night games, I think that's a better way to do it. But they want to start off on Thursdays. They want to grab that attention and put that spotlight on them. I mean, we will be seeing Thursday night football. Excuse me, all year long. So, yeah, that has been on the increase the last few years, though, right? The well, extra yeah. At the first, they at first they just started the season on Thursday, and then that was it. And then, well, and then you had the Thanksgiving games, of course. And then after Thanksgiving, they had a bunch of Thursday night games each week after Thanksgiving. And now it's just going to be all year round. So, yeah, more football. Yeah. I guess I can't hate too much on being able to watch more football. I just don't want the Redskins to play on Thursday nights because uh, we kind of do this this thing here on Thursday nights. Well, not only that, the preseason they had two Thursday night games. We had no Sunday games. Well, what was up with that? We had no. Yeah, you had Sunday. a couple. You had a couple preseason Sunday games, but not many. No, I'm saying this right. preseason we didn't have any preseason Sunday games. Well, not since not the Redskins. Yeah. Yeah, but there were teams out there. But preseason, you don't. You, those are usually played on random days. So that's that's a different story. Preseason, they don't always throw those in on Sundays. So, yeah, what can you do? But, yeah, so, yeah, like I said, we'll bring you more fantasy football football updates. But let us know any of the football stories that you like, that you disliked. Hit us up, of course. Comments down below, at what's for my face on Twitter, what's for my face at gmail.com. Of course, Google Plus and Facebook, all good ways to get a hold of us. And if you're in the Fantasy League, why don't you drop your uh, bragging, your trash talk down in comments down below. And um, I'll still win every game, even though I'm losing. No, I'm winning by one point. Yay. You feel good about yourself? <laughs> I, yeah, kind of a little bit. You know, At least I'm not losing. In my other league, I'm losing by a lot, so not so great. But yeah, so yeah, I think that's going to be about thing. do it for the evening. Um, it was a pretty heavy football show and some baseball. A little bit of, little bit of college football in there. That's but, still football. Yeah, it's still football. But as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we're going to headbang our way out of this joint. I call this my turtle dance.
right, everybody, go watch the rest of the football game. And hopefully.